and test an architect. So for this meetup, I wanted to touch base and quickly talk about gRPC in LabVIEW. So this is something that has been recently developed and is still being actively developed by NI. And I think this has a good amount of potential as well. So I wanted this session to be like an introduction to gRPC and what is currently possible with LabVIEW with gRPC. So I'll get started. So on the agenda side, we will get started with the basics like what is gRPC? How does gRPC work? What is the advantage of gRPC, let's say, in test and measurement? And then we will go more hands on where we will try to create an actual gRPC based uh, short example in LabVIEW. At any time, if there are any questions, feel free to interrupt me and ask or also post it in the chat. Yeah. So then uh, to start with, have you ever had any of the below requirements? Say for example, you are trying to create a test or a measurement module, but then you have somebody who wants to use that in some other programming language like LabVIEW or some other somebody else wants to use the same thing in Python. So this uh, usually this is something that could have that is something that could happen when we wanted to take our uh, test or a measurement module to wider teams within the same company. So some teams usually use one primarily one tech stack. Whereas if you want to take it to other groups, right? The primary challenge will be is that they might be using more Python. Somebody else will be using more LabVIEW. So that not be very easy to reuse or share code among different teams. So this is one challenge that we see. And the other is sometimes we want to communicate between two different applications which are written in two different programming languages. So in that case, we usually go with something like TCP to make that happen. And sometimes I think very rarely we also might have some use cases where we wanted to talk to two applications which are running in two different operating systems or two different species. So that also we can possibly go with TCP. So yeah. So now for whatever requirements that we saw earlier, gRPC is something that would solve those challenges. So to start with, what is gRPC? So gRPC in that RPC stands for remote procedure call. So this is a standard a uh, naming convention that is used and there are different types of RPC uh, available. gRPC is one of them and G, this, since it was developed by Google, they named it as Google RPC. So that's why it's uh, abbreviated to gRPC and what it, it is a type of a server client architecture and it follows the usual request response messaging system like client sends a request. The server receives the request, does something with it and sends a response back. So that's what it usually follows it. And uh, there are so this uh, the remote procedure call is what we I uh, technically call it as inter process communication, which is IPC, where multiple incompatible technologies can talk to each other. So, uh, so this was recently developed in Google, relatively recently, it's uh, in 2015, and they also made it open source, where a lot of other uh, companies have also started embracing it and using it. And for gRPC to work, right? So this is something that is independent of programming language. So there should be a standard way by which all programming language should understand gRPC, right? So what they do is they have this concept of interface definition language, which is basically like a, in, let's say if you have a C, we have a header file, right? Which tells what is the list of functions and what are the prototypes of each of the functions. So this is something similar to that. So gRPC has its own format of defining the functions that are present, and that is called a proto file. And this proto file is something just a text file. So any programming language can read and understand text file and generate their own APIs. So basically there are tools available for popular programming languages like C++, Java, Python, and C Sharp, where if you just give the proto file, it will automatically generate the bindings, where it will automatically generate the APIs for you. So in LabVIEW, we are currently, NI is currently uh, having a team who is working on this to make it uh, make gRPC supported in LabVIEW and we already have basic support uh, already present. Okay. Yeah, so since gRPC is basically a server client architecture, so you have uh, the server can be in any one programming language, whereas the client can be in any programming language. Like for example, in the right side, we have a simple image where the server is actually implemented in C++. It is able to talk to a client which is written in Ruby and it is also able to talk to another client which is written in Android or Java. And what the client does is the client sends a request to the server, which is the service, and it receives the response back to the client. So basically it's a typical server client architecture. The only major advantage of a normal server client architecture is 
here there are some tools which automatically generate the APIs for all these clients. Like for example, the same server client architecture, you can even do it using TCP IP. But then uh, you have to write the boilerplate code to receive the TCP response and then you have to uh, convert it back to whatever messaging format that you have. So you need to develop that wrapper for every API that you are creating. Whereas with GIPC, the tools automatically creates them for you and it also is available for all the different programming languages, popular ones. And the other is when somebody is wanting to talk, sending a command to the server, right? It's not very complicated. It will be as simple as calling a function that is written in the same programming language. The API is written in such a way that it will be just like calling a function within, let's say, for example, if it's LabVIEW, talking to the server, it will be as simple as calling a sub VI in LabVIEW. The sub VI will already be created. You don't need to worry about what is inside or how it happens, but basically you just have an API. You just drop it and you can talk to the server. So it is as simple as that. Uh, any questions so far, team? Uh, yes, one question is like from Satish is, is this similar to Protobuf? Yes, this is, uh, so Protobuf is actually the uh, the proto file that the GRPC uses. So GRPC users internally uses Protobuf. Okay. Yep. So basically the I was telling about the proto file, right? So whenever we want to talk to the server and client wants to talk to each other, right? There should be some uh, standard way by which we can define the messages. So that is the proto buff format where we say like this is the message. This is something like a structure where you can mention what are all the elements that are present within that structure. For example, if you want to send a message to someone and that message will contain a name, ID and has credit card. So these are the three information that you want to pass. You just create a structure in this format which tells proto that this is the message format that is I'm going to use. Which is basically like you may just mention the data type, the name. And you specify this one, two, three is nothing but uh, the order in which the elements are ordered. So that is the format of the proto file. So this is just a message. Now this message will be part of the proto file. So proto file, like I told earlier, it is just similar to a header file where you have the functions and the prototype of these functions. So in the right side, if you see, we have a service. So we have a greeter service, which is nothing but a collection of functions. And here every function is starting with an RPC that is remote procedure call. Say hello. This is the API name. Like whatever API that you're creating, you will have that API name is say hello. And there is a request message and there is a response message. So basically, this say hello function takes a message of hello request format and it processes it and it will return a response of this type, hello reply type. And these are the structure of this hello request and hello reply is present below, where a hello request is just a string which contains a name. And response also is just a string which contains a uh, message. So basically, this is the format for every function. There is only one input and one output. And that input and output is nothing but a message. And inside the message, you can put whatever elements that you want inside it. And the list of data types and the format of the proto file, I have provided a hyperlink here, which specifies all the different data types that are supported, like integer, string, and even it supports array. So all those and nested messages, all those are supported. Here we just see a very basic example just containing one string and one string input and one string output. Okay. Uh, any questions here on this proto format? Uh, one question is, will it support both synchronous and asynchronous communications? Yes. Yes. So it, uh, basically the GRPC supports both uh, uh, synchronous communication where you send the input and you immediately get a response back that is also supported. It also supports streaming where you just send a single input and you keep on getting response back. So it supports both server side streaming as well as client side streaming. Where for example, by streaming I refer it like, for example, uh, let's say that you want to read the data from the server repeatedly, right? You can just send a single input the server will start streaming the data back to the client till you uh, stop it or till you specify like how, how many data that you want. So both streaming and standard uh, request response message are supported. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I, Karthik, uh, I have a small dog. Yes, yeah. 
So when we are talking about this protobuf, right? This is an uh, structure of an Google. So they have for framed this. So whether we can able to modify this uh, file, protobuf file. Uh, the def the format of the proto file is standard, so we'll not be able to change the format of the file, but the con we can follow their rules and definitions and create whatever APIs that we want to create. So this will be a standard format, like similar to if you take you take C, the header uh, format of the header file is standard, right? That is fixed, but we can define our based on our inputs, we can define how the header what our header file should look like. So the mm -hmm. format is fixed, but the content we can define according to our use case. OK, OK, yeah, thank you. Because only because of the standard profile, all the different tools that the different programming languages are creating will be able to pass it and understand it. So the format is standard. Yeah, thanks, Kothi. OK, good, thank you. OK. Uh, so let's come to uh, what is the advantage of using something like gRPC in test and measurement, right? So first and foremost advantage is whatever module that you are creating is readily available as APIs in all the supported gRP supported programming languages. So you're not tied down to a single programming language. Let's say you have already have a code base that is already in, let's say, LabVIEW, and you want to write something else in Python because there are some reusable libraries there, you can still do that and you can immediately give it to others and others can use it in whatever programming language they want because gRPC automatically generates the APIs for uh, all the for all the APIs that you are creating. And uh, gRPC is also associated with this term called microservices. Uh, so usually when we create an application, it will be in a single programming language, which is like one big monolithic application. Even if one module has to be changed, we have to go and rebuild the entire application. And that that is something that is not very scalable. Whereas in terms of microservice, it's like every module is built as an application or a service where which talks to each other. So let's say for one particular module has to be updated, you will just the only the that particular module has to be rebuilt instead of rebuilding all the services because we are having each one as separate separate uh, services. So that is one advantage and gRPC is one way by which we can implement microservices. And the other major advantage, like I told us, instead of going with TCP IP for a server client architecture, if you go with gRPC, it readily generates the APIs for you for all the different programming languages. Any questions on these two advantages? I think no questions. OK, sure. OK, so now coming to uh, the gRPC support in LabVIEW, right? So gRPC support in LabVIEW has been recently uh, last year. I think around uh, last year the support has been started and this is available. Another good news is it's available under open source MIT license. So the whatever gRPC support that people are doing in LabVIEW, that code base itself is available uh, under open source directly available in GitHub. So anybody, even if you can, there are some contribution guidelines. So even if you can, anybody can go and contribute and add features to it. So this is under still under active development. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. So whatever the APIs and the naming conventions, all those things could potentially change because the 1.0 release has not yet happened. This is still in the preliminary stage, but initial support is available. And the, if you see like, like six months back, client support was not there, whereas now client support has also been added now. And the other thing is NI is also uh, seeing the advantage and potential of gRPC and they are creating a separate library for gRPC device for NI devices. It's basically the primary advantage that I'm uh, I heard is that now let's say if you want to talk to if you want to communicate to a particular NI instrument from a system, I need to have all the dr right drivers installed and that takes a very big uh, size of size and disk. Whereas with gRPC, I think what they are trying to do is they are they are trying to bypass the installation of the device drivers, and instead just by using gRPC, you directly talk to the uh, instrument directly without having any of the drivers installed. Similar to what we do with normal instruments, like in Skippy commands, you don't need to install any drivers. Basically, you send the Skippy format, the instrument understands the Skippy format and sends the response back, right? Something similar, NI is currently looking at for their device drivers, so that is also available in GitHub. So this is the GitHub link for that particular project as well. So as a whole, we are seeing a good amount of investment from NI towards this. 
and see uh, yeah so now let's go to the installation instructions so the release is uh, to if you want to go and install grpc the right now the recommended way is you can go to the github grpc lab view page and there there will be a releases tab in the releases tab you can go and download the zip file and the zip file will contain four uh, uh, vapm packages in that you have you can install these three packages in this particular order to add it to lab view and the minimum supported lab view version is 2019 so you can either use 2019 or 2020 or 2021 for support but i think lesser than 2019 is not currently supported so this is on the installation instruction so yeah so now let's go more hands on so let's start creating a proto file like i told earlier a proto file is nothing but uh, just a text file so here i have just used vs code and opened uh, the proto file uh, so that it has the proper syntax highlighting but in essentially you can even open this in notepad and make changes as well so initially there will be some piece of code that we can uh, ignore or we can just provide the proper name like what is the class name that we need to use so we specify the package name so package name is something like whatever this whole proto file will be packaged this is something like a namespace so we can provide a namespace for your code and then we are creating a service so one proto file can contain one or more services so for each service you can have a name and inside that service you will be having one or more api calls present so these are all the apis that we are trying to support so for our uh, simple example today we'll just go with a single service which contains two apis where what we want to do is we want one api where if somebody sends their name to the server the server has to send back a response saying uh, hi followed by their name so that is the say hello method so this is a normal simple api where there is one request and we get one response back and we also have one more uh, streaming example we will come to it later for now we'll focus on getting the basic uh, say hello method to work where we get an input and we want it to process it and send the response back to the client so to start with to create the server client architecture we just need to create this proto file this is the only thing that you need there is no other additional files or inputs you need but just with this proto file we can start generating our server client architecture so for that uh, let's get into the process so to uh, create the server right once you install the package you can in in tools menu there will be grpc open grpc server client code generation vi so once you click that the, you will be getting a window similar to whatever you see on the right side so this the only primary input that you need is the proto file and an empty labview project so once you specify this and run this it will automatically generate the the code for your server similarly for client it's the same process just that instead of uh, instead of asking you to generate the server you in the drop down you are specifying to generate the client so for both server and client code generation the only primary input is the proto file and an empty labview project so now let's get started in creating a the server and client yeah so i have this uh, folder already created i have this proto file and in client i have one empty project and in server i have an empty project so let me open labby 2020 where i have installed grpc so in tools we have this grpc and then we are have this option to launch this code generation so this launches this vi so here we have to browse and select the proto file so we are specifying this is the proto file this is basically we are saying like these are all the list of services and list of list of methods that uh, we want to generate and uh, target project is we can select an empty project so let me first generate the server so i'm just selecting an empty labby project and then i can specify what is the library that i wanted to create maybe i'll just call it as demo and i want to generate a uh, server so let me go ahead and simply run this so this will take some time so it will automatically the what the tool will now do is it will go and read the proto file it will understand what are all the list of messages list of apis that are required and it will create the lab view uh, template code for that particular server yeah so now it's done so it so the empty project that we had earlier now has some files that are auto generated so here if you see there is one run method so basically this is the starter vi once you want to launch the service you just have to run this vi this is the starting vi and we have all the messages like 
so we had uh, uh, hello request hello reply temp request temp reply right so in the proto file we have these four messages so all those four messages are available here and we have a set and get property for each of these messages the reason why there is a get and set method for each message is in proto file a message is not tied to a particular api like for example let's say i want to use the same message in another api i can still do that and this input can all this message can also be used either as an input or output so the messages are completely agnostic of uh, input or output or what function it is it is just a packet so you can use that packet name anywhere that is why when the with the auto code generation each message will have the get and set uh, code that is getting generated and we can use whatever we need for our use case so now since we have generated the server code let's now go and generate the client code as well i am just going and selecting the client project the proto file remains the same the same proto file will be used for generating both the server and the client I just change the client and then I want to now generate the client code. Yeah, so the client code is also done. And uh, if you see there are there'll be some APIs like for the service that we created, right? We created a we had a single service called greeter and inside that we had two APIs. So in the say hello method, you have one sub -BA. like I told earlier. So this is just a lab view API. So, uh, even though in the back end it is actually talking to the service and sending the data and getting the response back the people who wants to use consume this right as a client they just can treat this as a normal vi where you just pass some input and you get a response back you send something you get something back so it is as simple as that so let's try and start with a, a simple client code let's say for this hello world to work so there should be a constructor and a de and deconstructor VA that is available under client API. So whenever we want to start talking to the server, right, we first have to establish a connection. So that part is the create client. And then finally, we'll be having the destroy client. So these are the two APIs that needs to be called at the front and at the end. And if you see for the client code, the, there will be an input where it talks about what is the address that you want to communicate. So since it's a server client architecture, right? The client should know what is the address of the server. So that is something that we have to give here. And once we do that, it will establish a connection. And then we can call any of our APIs. Like for example, I can just simply wire the reference here. And now let's get the input and output data. So I'm requesting this, I'm responding with this. Yeah, this is the address. So this this is so to uh, to establish a connection to the server and make one call and get a response and then closing the client side connection. That's all this is needed. Only these three VAs are needed. And as as long as we are specifying a proper address, we can send some data and receive a response back. So the client side code uh, is complete now. Now let's go ahead and we have to do we have to now go to the server and uh, add the processing on what needs to happen when this request is received and send the response back right so let's now switch to the server let's now close the client any questions before moving there any questions on the client side uh hi this is shivraj here ah uh, yes shivraj uh the thing i have a question regarding this photo file now so the uh -huh. proto file you know, it's it's a simple uh, text file right uh, yes. for example if we do some mistake what will happen the format is not matched like uh, is there is a mirror uh. yeah i think if there is an error in the proto file i assume that when we are generating the code it will probably throw an error out i'm not exactly sure on how much error handling is currently available since it's in development but i'm assuming that it will throw out some errors saying that this for example maybe let's Maybe at the end of we can try it out. Maybe we'll say a message name which is not present and let's see what comes. So I think probably it will say throw out an error during the code generation part. Okay, yeah. But uh, there, there is no mechanism to validate like uh, before creating a server and uh, client APIs uh, as of now. Uh, I right? I am not sure. I think there might be some mechanism since in VS Code we have the syntax highlighting, right? 
maybe for example let's say i have this 10 See, for example if it is a xml we can directly we can check like uh, uh, xml mm -hmm. check so since uh, this is looks like some different format yeah 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 maybe we'll quickly check Validate. Yeah, I think I'm not sure. Probably I have to check. Yeah, but probably I think we yeah. that should um, even no. if that's not available, that is that should be an easy way to even we can create a tool to understand because we know right this is going to be the standard yeah. format. We can even generate a tool which just validates the proto file. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karthik, one more question is like, is there any a template or a boilerplate available for proto file? And if so, where it will be available? OK, OK. So the in the gRPC, uh, the code base that I was saying, right, the NI gRPC lab view code. So they have an examples folder. In the examples folder, there is a protos and we have some sample proto file, like we have a hello world proto, root guide proto. And apart from that, in the Google Proto format also they have a link where there will be some example profiles available. Since it's not specific to LabVIEW, right? There are, there are different avenues. So one preferred avenue is we can just use the LabVIEW uh, GitHub repository to get a sample profile. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so let me go ahead and close the client. tool so i'll launch the server now so we have this uh, run service and we also have the default server address so this is the address that we have to give to the client when we want to talk to it and uh, in uh, the server also there are actually two modes of uh, operation one is an asynchronous operation and another is a synchronous operation so for now for today's meeting we'll just go with the synchronous one since it's a much more simpler one so basically uh we have to now go to the so now one thing we have to do here is we have to uh this template code is something that can that is made to support more than one service as well so to start with we have to update the service class like for example we have this creator class right so that is our uh, class for the our service so we need to so if you see this one is actually the base template Yeah, this is the service base class. So we have to replace this with the, our greeter class. Okay. Once this is done, then you can go to the start API. And in the synchronous one, so this is this is where we have that uh, uh, parent child class implementation. So each service that we are creating will be a child class, and the implementation is from base class perspective. So in our case, we will be the our code will be launching the start sync of greater class, which is the child class. So here we basically have a while loop with an event structure. Any client, whatever message that they are sending, it will be uh, we'll be able to capture it in this event structure. Already there will be uh, the events created. Like for example, since we had two APIs defined in the proto file, we have the two user events created here as well. So we have a say hello user event. And primarily the primary input that we'll be getting here is an ID. So this will be the only input that we get from the server. So here we can do whatever code that we want to actually get the actual data, post process it and send it back. So to do that, we have to convert this ID into our actual request. So for that, we have to use the code that has been already generated. Like for example, for the uh, RPC methods, we have to say hello. Uh, no, not this one. I think uh, uh, this hello request, right? So we know that in the proto file for say hello, the input format, the input message is actually hello request. So we need to go to hello request. And now we are trying to get the hello request. So we need to use the get uh, API. So if you drop this get API, it will take in a gRPC ID. And it will actually translate and give you the actual message that the somebody has sent from the client. So this one, if you see, the output is actually the name. It is basically the the hello request. Whatever contents that are present inside here, this will be returned as a cluster. So that is what this API will do. Okay. And now 
to send that information back to the client, we know that the, the response is of hello reply type. So we have to go to the hello reply. And here we have to use the set method because now we want we are trying to send the data to the client. So to the set method, we have to send the so basically this will also take in a GRPC ID. We will just wire this. And we have to pass in the data that has to be sent to the client. So here we are getting the data that the client has sent. We can post process here and we can send the data back to this man. Once we send the data to this API, the client will receive it. So now let's see this in action. Let's unbundle this cluster. So I'm getting the name. I'll just quickly add an H string. So I just I followed by the name is what we are trying to send back. So I will stop this. So this cluster will contain whatever contents that we have defined as the message. So since for the reply we have only one string, that is what is getting listed here. Any questions team so far? So this is how we the server is you get an JRPC ID and from the ID you get the cluster that actually the client has sent. And with that data you can do post processing and then you have an API to send the data back, push the data back to the client. Okay, so now let's see if this works. So let's close this, close this, close this. Yeah, so this is the server. So now let's open the client as well. Okay, now let's run the server. Yeah, the server has started, it's now running. Now let's go to the client and let's go to the VA that we created, which is basically creating, talking and then closing. And we now know the address as well. Let's copy the address and paste it. Okay, so now let's say Chennai Lab user group. So now let's just run it. Yeah, so the client was able to establish a connection to the server, send this data to the server, and the server post processed the data, and whatever data that was sent back, we received it here. But from the client perspective, it could just be even a small lab UV. It doesn't even know that it is actually something that it's going to some other server and then getting the data, responding back. Everything is completely abstracted out. From the user perspective, if they know lab view, they can just use gRPC. It's not something that to use gRPC, they need to know gRPC. Basically, anybody who knows lab view or anybody who knows a particular programming language can start using it. It's just as if calling a reuse code within their function, within their programming language. The same way we can talk to a server as well. So that is the power or advantage of gRPC. It completely abstracts out all these complexities and it is also doing it in a much efficient way. So the gRPC performance is much better than, let's say if you are trying to use TCP, probably for serializing the data, you'll be using JSON. But whereas the protobuf with gRPC uses is much more packed, whereas you'll be able to get a much better performance with gRPC compared to TCP. So any questions so far team? Uh, Karthik, I have a question. Uh, uh, yes, Sandhuf. So, so now we have created a profile and created uh, scripted all these items, right? If I have to update, let's say I, I, in the response, in addition to the string, I want to add a numeric data. How easy is it to uh, modify it or upgrade the uh, uh, profile or the implemented code? Yeah, so the, the way is you can directly go and edit the profile. And in the generation, you can just simply select the instead of selecting an empty project, you can select the same project. And if you run it, it'll automatically override the files. Okay, thanks, Karthik. Yeah, so that is the so. But if you see, uh, since it's overwriting, right? Even the engine, for example, this is one code that gets scripted, right? I'm not sure whether this VA will get overwritten or not. 
So in our case, what we did was we had a dispatcher VI here and we had our user generated code in a separate place. So uh, currently there is, there is actually an open ticket in the GitHub repository to try to have a separate folder for auto generated code and separate folder for user generated code. So that is still in uh, development, uh, but uh, that, that feature is still in uh, backlog. But ideally, we it is possible to establish an easy way by which the auto generated code is separate, the user generated code is separate, so that even when you rebuild, it's not like you have to go and redo this functionality. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I think since we are out of time, probably I can close now. So I think. Uh, uh, hello, Kathy Monk Dow. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This can be used in RT as well, right? Same protocol and uh, dynamically also we can change it or how it is. Okay, dynamically creating the data structure, I think uh, as, as far as I know, it's not supported by gRPC. So the basic is I think uh, the profile has to be fixed and you will be generating the client code and server code. But if you want to have a, a, a profile that needs to be dynamically generated, I think it's a bit more advanced and probably you need to have a uh, your own serialization and deserialization. For example, it is technically possible to have a JSON string as input and you can send any data and pass it and do your own uh, response back. But I think that is not something that is readily supported. It's not currently available okay. as what But it is possible. If you really want to have a generic method, you can actually just use a JSON string and send and receive back. I'm not sure whether there are any other uh, better ways to do it currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. And the one more thing, this is supporting only with the Proto 3, so not with Proto 2. I think so, yeah. I'm not sure. Maybe I think we can raise Because it just now I checked it in the GitHub as well that are, they have given only the Proto 3. Okay, okay. So actually, basically, we are using Proto 2 in our application because it was okay. on some sorts of older device. Okay, okay. So that's what I'm just confirming. Currently, we are doing it with Python. So if you want to implement it in lab, we have to think about that as well, right? So okay. the version conflict should not be there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what is the difference between Proto 2 and Proto 3? Or I think the basic structure, I think, might be the same. No, I am not sure about the differences. OK, OK, sure. So you are using uh, Protobuf, but not gRPC currently, is it? Uh, no, no, we are not using gRPC. We are using Python for conversion. After conversion, this data will be passed to LabVIEW. OK, OK. So we are taking care of this in the host side, but uh, for live data, if it is in RT side, it will be much better. That's what I asked, like whether it can be done in uh, RT. Sometimes this protobuf, because it is in development phase, so we will uh, change the protobuf structure so frequently that's what i just asking you like whether it can be a fixed one or how it can be okay okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. thank you uh, one more question karthik uh, is there any specific language to develop protofile ah uh, no protofile is actually programming language agnostic so it's basically just a text file right so they have this basic format so it is not tied to any programming language so this is a generic uh, interface definition language, which different programming languages are uh, parsing and understanding and creating their APIs. And the list of supported programming languages, I think we can find it in the Google uh, page. I think they have C++, C Sharp, Dart, Go, Java, Kotlin, Python. Okay, so. So whatever server client, since currently we developed both in LabVIEW, but it could be any other way as well. Client could be LabVIEW, server could be Python, server could be LabVIEW, client could be Python. It could be mix and match of any combination is possible. That is the advantage. Okay. Sure. So, uh, so the, I think people who are more interested and like to know more, I would recommend uh, downloading the and NIGRPC LabVIEW repository, which has the examples folder, and they have a few more examples, including streaming as well. 
client side streaming server side streaming bidirectional streaming all those examples are available the root guide is one good example which has all these different types implemented so uh, you know, who is interested can check it out the proto file is available on the protos folder